Dr. Nicholas Felix is um, a deputy, well, he was the deputy national youth coordinator in the now defunct um, uh, presidential campaign council. And um, he was the youngest uh, presidential aspirant in the 2023 election. He's an economist. He's based in the U.S. But just before we continue, Nicholas, let me bring in uh, Uche, who has called in from Newe. Uh, good morning, Uche. Good morning, um, Yori. Good morning, um, Yori. Yes. Thank you for yeah. calling. Yes. Good morning, uh, uh, Dr. Nicholas. Good morning to you. I thought, I thought, uh, I thought Dr. Nicholas was supposed to be the youth uh, the minister, the minister of, um, for the youth. I thought he was. Uh, I thought he was. I, I thought he would have been better for uh, for him to be have been the minister uh, for for youth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, well, being that it may, um, yes, I think uh, I see him as a young man that has prospect. Sure, sure. In future. Of course. Yes. Yeah, my sister, you know. Um, when I don't know who is saying, is it the, is it the, who, is, who is saying that they will bring dollars? I mean, the, the last time I checked, I think uh, I, I don't think uh, Saudi Arabia they use dollar. So I can't just under, I can't just understand Saudi Arabia telling us that they will bring they will pump in dollars to our economy. Okay. I mean, don't that. Uh, okay. Um, you know, you know, they, uh, I, I can't I can't just understand the. Um, if Saudi Arabia had obtained us to bring experts to help us in our refinery, yes, it is it's possible because uh, Aramco is one of the best refineries in the world. Uh, and, you know, Saudi Arabia, uh, they think they are the owners of uh, Aramco, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, you are uh, correct. For to, yeah, for them to tell us that they will bring in dollars. You, uh, I mean, from where? Okay. Can you give what you don't can you, can you, you cannot give what you don't have. Uh, okay. Um... I hear you. Thank you very much, Uche, for calling in. Uh, you recall that uh, I actually, I actually uh, talked about this and I asked um, uh, the, our, our guest, uh, Nicholas Felix, uh, you know, I, an economist, to sort of uh, shed a bit more light on, that, uh, light on that. As you know, Aramco, you spoke, um, you know, Saudi Arabia is the largest producer of uh, crude and uh, it had pledged to support, you know, reforms in the central bank. Uh, but then, taking it back to you, Dr. Felix, uh, would you like to? Uh, you heard Uche's uh, inquiry. Yes, uh, thank you, Uche, for for that recommendation. But <laughs> quickly, uh, we don't use dollar. Dollar is not our currency. Also, we use naira. So, but you must understand that dollar is the world accepted currency. Most times, when you are doing business internationally, regardless of the country you are, you use you know you sometimes use dollar. So that's why. Uh, the issue of dollar was dropped because it's not yes they don't have dollars as their currency we also as nigerians don't have dollars as a currency but this is the accepted uh, uh currency used by in you know when it comes to to business so uh just to put that there now understand that this was part of it was not the only issue that mr president went to saudi arabia to discuss you know it was just in the sideline of of the, the summit he went there to strike business deal, and even in the energy, the, the, the health sector, the agriculture, so many areas were touched, so many uh, investors uh, came on board, you know, wanting to, to, to be part of this business deal. So I think it was a, it was a full package. If, if I may quickly just throw this in before I forget, you see, I love the fact that the, the president painted Nigeria uh, very good in the international community. Remember, the world was watching. Africa was watching. It wasn't South, just Saudi Arabia. One thing that we have not been doing well as Nigerians is we always say negativity out there. It makes it look like Nigeria is the worst nation on earth. You know, everything is amplified. For example, I, I was watching somebody who came, and as soon as they landed at uh, Muruta Mohammed Airport, there was queue. I mean, that went out of proportion. Oh, there's queue in Nigeria. It made it so horrible. You would think uh, if you're on a queue, you are going to die. But there's queue all over the place. When I was coming a few days ago at uh, Newark Liberty Airport, I was at the airport for two hours. Sometimes planes get delayed in Nigeria. We turn it to, to the world as if this is the worst it can ever happen. I flew Delta the other day. Delta has a direct flight from Lagos to Atlanta. 
and I'm, I was supposed to take a local flight to New York. I was at the airport in Atlanta for eight hours. The world did not die. So we can't always just, you know, present Nigeria to the world as the worst nation. It's affecting us, whether you like it or not. No matter mm -hmm. how much you, you think you are fighting the government by saying these things, mm. you think you are condemning the government, mm -hmm. you are indirectly presenting us bad. There are local flights all the time. Every time I want to fly locally here, sometimes always changes, always delay. So there are some issues that are not just peculiar to Nigeria alone. So we have to learn when we are dealing with international community to present us. All right. I'm, I'm so glad that the president did a good job, uh, especially using this word, we are open for business. Okay. Uh, I like that phrase, we are open for business. I indeed. Nic Nicholas, let me, let me bring on uh, Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Reverend, and uh, thank you for holding on. You've been on for a while. Go ahead, sir. Good, good morning, Chibiori. Good, good morning, uh, Felix. Felix is one of the best young men. I think that representing Nigeria very well. Context election, and maybe, I don't know whether he give up then or what, but he, he continue contributing his quota to APC. Chibiori, the former governor of Lagos State described our president, that's fashion lad, as a, a coach. He described the last, the last president as a coach who sit down and watch. But he described this president as a coach who joined his players to execute his mission. And this was who uh, our president is. When he goes around the whole world, he will not sit down and watch ministers execute it. He will join them to make sure they execute it. That's the beauty of this president. He's doing excellently well. Baby, uh, please give me 60 seconds. I want to comment on your breaking news this morning. Yore, if there's a man that will join a Muslim in trial, is the man who is in the NPC today. I call it Northern Nigeria Company Limited. That man is one of those who forced us not to win election here. The Muslim was calling Naira. That man, uh, uh, was sitting well that makes campaign mission impossible. I had a bet told me, one bet told me that they, they think they remove Abakari benefits, that they, they haven't will fall. Our president Tribu is a courageous man. Abakari must stand the trial like, uh, like a Bepele. That one who persuaded that young man not to win the election. All right. Uh, thank you very much for calling in, uh, Reverend Dominic. And, um, uh, well, uh, Nicholas, coming back to um, the mainstream of our conversation, um, you know, you, especially in your explanation to uh, Uche's inquiry, um, uh, you touched on a number of aspects, all of which uh, we all, the, 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 this administration, in particular the president, needs all hands to be on deck. And um, in that connection, uh, the last thing that we would have uh, wanted was to have a strike on our hands, you know, uh, a nationwide strike. And uh, as you know, there was the danger of that uh, looming. But happily, that has now uh, been resolved. Uh, yesterday here on uh, this program, uh, I caught a lot of flack. I entered into uh, uh, galloping, serious galloping, when I suggested that uh, NLC you know, uh, should be you know, given some kudos for you know, having met us halfway. But as it happens, the House of Reps has also done the same thing has said that, look, you know, uh, you know when you, no matter how you look at it, they were going to come into it before they found that, uh, they, they got to know that, oh, the NSA, National Security Advisors Office, has stepped into it, and there's been a resolution of the matter. And they themselves had said that there was no need anymore to liaise with their Senate uh, counterparts to, you know, uh, see how they could intervene, and commended uh, Labour as a result. But as I said, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it goes with the job. I, I, I hit serious galloping. People called in. They were quite angry, let it be said. That, what are you talking about, Labour needing kudos? So I wondered what you would think uh, about that whole idea that um, the House of Reps gave Labour some kudos for at least returning us to a state of normalcy so we continue uh, battling with our problems in a, in a more peaceful manner. Oh, th thank you for this question. Let me just, uh, you know, take a few minutes to explain a few things. Well, oh, okay, uh, okay. Start, if it's going to take you uh, the few minutes, I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Forgive me. But let me take Mr. Yakub, who has also called in. Otherwise, he'll be hanging in there. So I'll come straight back to you. Good morning, Mr. Yakub. Could you make it brief, please? 
Okay, so I'll try. Well, I'll try as much as to do that. Uh, but if you only uh, to make it brief, uh, although I'll try, sir. Anyway, uh, good, good morning to your guests and then I'll see you as, as, as well. Uh, if you only uh, the kudos that you refined to again this morning. If you listen to one of our callers yesterday, I think the woman called from Abuja. Or, Maybe I said it myself. Uh, I said it. Yes, you, but yes. it is in the news. Jolly, the yes, House of Jolly. Reps has also done the same thing. So why don't you let us, you know, look at the subject? But please go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Fine. They see that on their own, not for Nigerians. Okay. That's that. Okay. But for, me, for, for Mr. President and the gay that we are expecting, you see, this is the kind of president we have been looking for. Whether we like it or not, I give him my vote. I campaign for him. And several people in my locality, I pay them to vote for him. And then they do so. And then I can tell you, Chief Jolly, I'm not regretting that I give that vote to Mr. President. You know why? Why? Because his word of God, the man kicked the ball rolling. He began to travel and then make sure that he called attention of him first all over the globe. Even though when the organized labor are trying to bring the system down, he keeps him going. Up all the all the things that people are saying concerning this man, he was not even look at that. He, he focused on the goal and then he wanted to get it done. And then don't forget, this state is a person says that we should not pity him. And then I can see that he means but in fact, we, and then we are not ready to pity him. All, some of us are giving our phones, including uh, Pastor, uh, uh, one of our scholars from uh, Porto. I forget his name now. Mr. George, every one of us, we are not going to pity him. It is not something that we, we feel that did not do right. As a, as a friend of Mr. President, we are going to, and then it's already got on us to bless you guys. So this is only a platform that we can bring our, our, our mind to, to give us an opportunity to tell Mr. President this is what we are, want, we, we are looking for. And then yesterday, Mr. Lodi, I will not leave you, sir. I'm sorry to use this word. I will not leave you until you bring the Minister of Power and State. All right, then. So come and tell us. I hear you, sir. Thank you very much. And I had to let you vent. You know, as I said, me, myself, I was... I will, I will, I will, you know, it was, it, it was what it was yesterday, and I accept that. Uh, but I've now put it to uh, Nicholas, say, look, what do you think about this whole issue that uh, some of our viewers were quite angry about for my daring to even suggest any kind of kudos for labor whatsoever? Okay, yeah, uh, I'll start by saying uh, I'm an employer of labor myself. Uh, you know, within the past few years, I've hired over 3,000 people, mostly Nigerians here in, in America. Uh, currently, hundreds of employees daily that work in our companies, and even Nigeria too have uh, you know uh, employ employees. So I, I understand the pain of employees, and uh, any day, any time, I will stand with the uh, civil servant. I will stand with the employees. Uh, but I will say, Ajero is doing a very horrible job. I must tell you that the the the, the he's not he's not leading very well at all. You know uh, why do I say that? It seems as this is political to, for him. Every little thing he wants to go on national strike. The president is in Saudi Arabia trying to get investors to come to our country. Uh, you are here busy with strike. I understand what happened to him. I understand it, the reason why they went on strike. And I sympathize with him. Uh, it, it shouldn't have, what happened to him should not have happened. And I do hope that uh, wherever those people are, they are brought to justice. And, you know, the assault on him is uncalled for. And we sympathize. But you see, National strike is not a joke. You cannot be throwing a nation, the economy. We're already bleeding. We're already, you know, a lot are already going on. We, since the president was sworn in, he's threatening, if I'm not mistaken, over three or four times to just go on national strike. Yeah. National strike. Yeah. And for the wrong reasons, you know. And the worst part for me, let, let me just talk. I'm not saying this because I'm part of this administration. I'm just speaking as an employer, as somebody, you know, uh, who won the welfare the, the good of our, of our dear people in, in Nigeria. Every little thing you want to go on strike, he, he runs to the villa, the next day he call off strike. It's, it's as if he's hungry to go to the villa to just to go out and sit and discuss. He's not doing a good, good job. He needs to sit down and watch his approach of, of leadership. He's, he's, he's leading very, very wrongly. You cannot be going on national strike for every little thing. What happened to serious discussion? What happened to debate? What happened to, you know, uh, I was listening to uh, uh, Comrade Adams and Shemole, my leader from Edo State. He was explaining some few things. The National Labor Congress is not just to represent federal government workers. So all this while, when I hear uh, minimum wage has been increased, 
uh, the government has added 35,000, making it 65,000 naira. This is just for, for state and federal government workers. What happened to the private sector? I've not seen him sit down with the private sector, people like the Dangutis, people who have thousands of employees, to discuss all of this. It's always about the, 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 the federal government. Yes, that's part of his job, but he's not doing a good job at all. Okay. He cannot be threatening with strike at uh, every little thing. You want to go on a national strike. That's it, not what we need now it, in Nigeria. It, exactly. And um, yesterday, a certain uh, Madam Taiwo called in from Abuja, and she was quite poignant, say, do you know the amount of havoc that was wreaked on our nation you go into the you know you go to the hospitals you go there's so many ways that you can't even begin to imagine in which um that strike which was adjudged to be unnecessary uh that call which was adjudged to be unnecessary by uh, most people um you know that it um uh, that it sort of caused and so that madam taiwo among others was quite angry at the matter but the House of Reps now are calling, uh, applauding Labour over the suspension of the strike. Um, wh what do you think that was all about? I mean, they, they went on a two-day strike, and they, they, yes, we applaud them for calling it off. Okay. Uh, a strike that should, not, that should never be, uh, uh, you know, it shouldn't have a battle in the first place. But I don't think there's anything wrong to applaud them for calling it off. It means it got some sense to, to, to do the right thing. So... We applaud him for, for calling it off. Okay. Yeah, you, you. I recognize the efforts of the members of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, ESES, whose unwavering commitment to securing the process was impregnable. Permit me to also appreciate the 18 political parties that participated in the election for the collaboration with the Commission in the state throughout the period of the election process. It was with the partnership of all our key stakeholders that the success of Saturday's election was realized. The journey to this day was dominated by engagements with the security agencies under the office of ESET, political party. Business lives on the fast track of numbers. Business is... Women and youth organizations, civil society organizations, and the of persons with disabilities. There is no doubt that these engagements have made far-reaching impact on the election process. Business lives on the fast track of numbers. Business is a strange world where low numbers mean something different. And its currency are speed and time. Finding the open doors of Main Street is not just good business. It's the start of the business. Join us every weekend on Business Week. Now, the, the, the question you ask yourself now is, uh, with the manner at which he has been using strike, weaponizing it, You'll be asking yourself, when is the next strike coming? Is it going to be next week? Because his phone call was not picked. You know, he, he has to sit down and, and we strategize on how to really represent the Nigerian labor workers. There, there's more to do. He's not, he's not doing a good job, I must tell you. He's not doing a good job. Okay, but uh, uh, Fidel? Uh, good morning. Fidel Inoweri, good morning to you, sir. Thank you very much, Chief. And I want to say that strikes are no longer in vogue and should be a last resort after negotiations and discussions and so on. So we should not, Labour should not be in a hurry to go on strike. Be that as it may, about the discussion as it affects uh, President's trip to Saudi Arabia, we must look towards, create a conducive atmosphere by making sure that we have security in this country so that investors will come in. There will be employment. Also, whatever we are going to do to attract investors should be done. Even if it means mounting pressure on the states and so on to carry out the activities in such a way that the world will know that they can operate here. Policies should not be relaxed in such a way that people can come in here and invest. That is my take. I'm Fidel Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fidel, for uh, calling in. 
And um, indeed, uh, it's, it's been said loud and clearly that um, Fidel just sort of reiterated the idea that strikes are hardly the uh, weapon that you bring to bear. We had guys in, we had people in here yesterday who said the strike thing is um, a last resort issue after exploring thoroughly all other issues, uh, all other possible solutions to the matter. And that's the sense in which uh, the Nigeria Labour Congress uh, has been criticized uh, in, you know, in recent times uh, for not doing. Why has Labour been too hasty to leave uh, any roundtable conference? Why don't they sit down, thrash out the issues, especially as this administration uh, has the reputation of being a listening one and an engaging one and that wants to talk about exactly. these issues. So why exactly. uh, th that is where Labour might have opened itself up to the, um, let me use the word conjecture, that it is actually carrying on as a partisan party and uh, that is not what Labour is supposed to be, has been the criticism that has been levelled and it, a lot of people have been angered that Labour has appeared to be carrying on as if it was part of a, a political party. And um, that uh, has not gone down well with many people. Um, by the way, I don't know if you share that particular view. Of, of course, that is, now again, we, we, I'm not disputing that there are issues that the federal government need to, to, uh, to address when it comes to labor. But I'm saying you cannot just be using strike. It's just like a couple, husband and wife. Uh, the wife runs to court to fire wanting to threaten to fight for divorce. Oh, the money my husband gave me is not enough to cook. I'm going to go divorce you. Uh, I called my husband yesterday. He didn't pay. I'm going to go divorce you. You cannot be using this uh, all the time. Strike should be a once in a white thing. And in my opinion, if you go on the strike, let the federal government know I'm really going on strike. Whatever it is we are looking for is going to happen. Not you go out, you call on strike. They call you to the villa, you run there. The next day you call on strike. Is this a joke? You know, it's beginning to look like he's playing with this. All right, the position then. is occupying mm -hmm. as, as president of the NLC. It's a very serious one. He needs to watch his approach. We are no longer in, in uh, campaign. This is not governance. This is no longer politics. Whatever party you belong to, it's time to see the saw. Let us all come together and see how we can move Nigeria forward. When time for election comes, you can bring all your, your whatever it is that you <laughs> want to do to campaign. But oh. for now, let us get back to governance. The, the president needs all the support that he can get. He can't be in Saudi Arabia calling for investors to come. And you are at home setting the, the house on fire, okay. telling investors this is what's going to happen when you get here. We, we are not helping ourselves. He needs okay. to watch his Mr. Joshua uh, in Ire Walide, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you, sir? Very well, thank and, you. Uh, good morning to your guest. Yes. I appreciate him for doing justice to the topic. I would say I tried really yesterday to call him. I'm happy that the people that called him uh, spoke along the line of what I would have said. I, I, I must say that you are doing your job professionally, and I commend you for that. But the uh, truth is, labor, just like in Mesele, they want to destroy Nigeria. Uncle Yori, let everybody understand this. I think uh, we were not stepping up. CBN crunched Nigeria into zero uh, uh, deficit. Let me say we went into zero level economic wise. That uh, printing of currency ruined Nigeria. And it was at a period where we went into election. Let everybody understand that uh, this country is in a very fragile situation. We need to navigate it carefully so that it will come out of uh, the mess. I'm happy with uh, the word your guest is using. We have a president who is marketing Nigeria. That is very, very important. Or we are very germane. You have a president who is a marketer, who is selling the nation. That is social capital. Yeah. There's nothing more yeah. important than that for a nation. So we, Nigeria is, uh, is, a, is in a state where the citizens think that the way to be patriotic is to condemn Nigeria. And they now market Nigeria. Mm. 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 Well, 
Oh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Joshua in Ire Walide. Uh, uh, Nicholas, as you know, in closing now, as he put it, uh, the president is marketing Nigeria, and a lot of people are happy about that. You can't be demarketing Nigeria and yet say that you are a patriot. And um, a lot of yeah. people feel that frivolous, incessant, unnecessary strikes, um, you know, could actually end up demarketing uh, Nigeria. Which is not the same as to say that labor doesn't have the right to go on strike, but the conditions have been laid out. It should always be an absolute last resort, not the very first port of call. I guess that's the point that most critics uh, have been making. Exactly. That is exactly the same thing we're saying. They have the right to, to go on strike. You know, uh, the, the cause which they are fighting for is legit. But th th this last strike, I think that's just what he, the, he, the issue is with me. Uh, the reason for it was not necessary. Uh, there are more bigger issues to fight with, to deal with. For example, subsidy was removed. Are you aware that the state allocation from the federal government has increased? There are states who have refused to honor the, the increment of, from the federal government. You see, we always, everything is always on the president, the president. Yeah, I'm asking myself, where are the governors? Yeah. Where are the state strike? There are state governors who are not honoring this. The allocation that has gone up because of forest subsidy removal, what are the governors doing with it? Why are we not breathing on their necks? Why <laughs> Those are the things. The president, the president, okay. you know, well, we, we, we have to see it differently. Well, and we encourage him to... to you know, look at his, his approach of leadership and change. Don't call for strike for every little thing. If they refuse to pick your call, All right, you're Dr. threatening on strike. All right, Dr. Not how All right, Dr. Nick. All right, Dr. Felix. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nicholas Felix. You know, thank you very much for coming to our program. It's always a delight to have you. And uh, thank you for doing it again this time. Okay, so that's our program today. Thank uh, you for having me. Our pleasure. So please join us uh, on Monday for a fresh edition I am Yori Folaring. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye for now.